Gladstone Sturgeon. We haven't seen this all day today. No, we haven't. First time. Um. Yeah, so this will be interesting to see if uh, how exactly this one comes out. Obviously, Noctis is not playing. Yep. Uh, so we're not going to see Clash Blaster Pro Cycle. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I don't know what it is about this map that makes him like Clash so much. I, I, I need to ask at some point. I don't get why this is a Clash map. Like, I can see it being decent here, but why every why not over something? What, I, 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 I feel like it's mostly because there are just so many convenient, conveniently sized things yep. that are just like perfect for Clash. Like a lot of the drops, a lot of the overhangs are just perfect for Clash Blaster. Um, so like, I think in that degree, it makes sense. I suppose so. Um, so yeah, Grand Finals, everybody. Just weighing on Biscuit to pick his weapon. Probably going to be in the Nautilus. I feel like earlier today, we saw FD win have much more success with the Nautilus over anything else. So I'd really like to see them pull that out. We finally have it. FD win and Radiance are back at it again after a long, long time. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Grand Finals of In The Zone 21. Hypnos actually going over to the E leader here and a much more natural FC win composition of what we're used to seeing coming out of them. Of course, Biscuit highlighting that one on the Nautilus. Yep, that's what they're going to be doing. They have the armor already. Popping it immediately this time. Very different from how FC win normally approach. Normally going for those slow armors. They will be popping it immediately, trying to take that control of zone on this map. They are on it right now, just trying to go over it. But it looks like no one goes down until Shaq finally gets going down as the first blood. Kyo getting taken down second, and this will be Radiance now. Moving forward, trying to take his zone, unless Biscuit is trying to get any last kind of exiting picks. Isn't quite able to find any, though. It is going to go ahead and jump on away. And now the lockout is going to start here for Radiance. Can we find this break back game here? You notice Biscuit is coming up on the side with that inkjet, but no gets caught out with a bomb. It actually going to go down here, which means FT Win going to have to reset. Now Kyo goes down on the tri slosher. First, he could have to jump back. And Shaq getting taken down with Hypnosis E leader. Uh, Radiance looking very strong right now to continue setting themselves up for success. And they still have all four of their specials online to defend off this next one. Yeah, they have all four special online to defend the push. They pop the cloud early, trying to get the people on the top left, and uh, Inkjet Armor is popped as well as the cloud. They need to find immediate value. They do. They find great. However, Bursi goes down for FD Win. That's losing a lot of pain power. But it looks like FD Win might be able to overpain, but Abito goes for a flank, but take maybe where he wasn't supposed to. That will be now ready. He's trying to be back onto the zone, but Kyo gets another nice kill, and it will be FD Win keeping control, well, <laughs> turning control into their favor for the first time in the series. Finally, some breathing room once more for FD Win. Um, you already know his burst, he just ditching the zone and charging up for armor almost as soon as possible. Really want to have that at the ready, especially given the fact that their opponents don't have an armor, uh, which means that, or actually, no, I guess there's the H3. Uh, but anyway, they are going to be looking to try to defend this one off. Here comes the rest of the specials coming up from Radiance. Can they see that you'll notice three members of a team win all clustered around, all trying to work towards the same common goal. They're maintaining a lot of map control here. Now it's one for one trade. Uh, looks like this is going to be great going down. Here going down, but Biscuit able to find that. What a triple. And it is going to mean that FT win holds onto the zone and very likely going to be taking the lead. Game turning triple for Biscuit. That, that was absolutely crucial to keep them in the series. They have the cloud online. Thanks to Shaq Navi to use it to help them. And that will be the lead flipping over to FT win. Radiance definitely have the abilities go back in now they have the cloud they have the armor they have the inkjet popping them all at once just weighing on that last inkjet and here they come kiva needs to find value with this but him those gets taken down instead that's not what we'll see gray's coming through the baller but it's only gray and kiva left and the pain is gonna go to the zone and that's fd win taking game one of the grand finals that looked so strong for Radiance to start things off. FT win, just able to have a strong, slightly stronger hold there towards the end in order to take that game. Um, yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, game-changing triple there coming out of Biscuit there, especially um, able to just pop off there with the main weapon and just, again, take care of all three of those members. Had some teammate support, but um, well done there because, again, if even one of those members of Radiance is left on alive, they're able to sweep back through and challenge the zone just a little bit more, probably stalling for a little bit more time and then buying some time towards the end of that game, even if the cap was taken back. So um, impressive stuff there from Biscuit and FT win. Able to hold on to that. We'll have to see how far this set goes. Best of seven, everybody. So still plenty of time left to go in this uh, match. But as a reminder, Radiance does have to win two sets in a row in order to doubly eliminate FT win. Now, Muscle Forge TC in particular is kind of a big FT win map. I'm pretty sure it's always been their first pick in Tassel. And Kyo actually said it's because his weapons just do so well on this map. 
On zones, I think it's a little bit different. You can't just sit on their side for the entire game try, while your team's pushing tower and stuff like that. It's a little bit more restricting. So I feel like it could be a pretty even matchup here considering that Rapid can do pretty well here. However, I would definitely say that, you know, they're probably pretty confident going into this map in general. It's a map that I've used to. Oh. This is like FT wins bread and butter. Their bread and butter is tower control, muscle forge, fitness. They are going to be so comfortable here. We'll have to see if they can convert that into zones and convert it into this win over Radiance. And already the armor coming out of Bursty here. Getting challenged here on the other side. Uh, and now trade is happening all around the zone. Ko trying to step on board, trying to find something. But that short range of the Bry Slasher is going to be very minimalizing in terms of the impact that Ko can really have at this stage in the game. Uh, and really, in just getting traded on top of this zone right now, very little is happening in terms of one team actually getting a strong foot. Yeah, it's pretty even in mid right now. Inkjet does get popped by 50. Gonna try and fight Hypnos, and Hypnos will get taken out, which should give FT win the control they need. Finding another two, that's finally gonna be FT win taking the control they need. A trade from Kyo, though, which will leave the member short. In fact, two members short. Shack goes down somewhere, as Kyo's doing a lot right now, but does get taken down late, which means they can't really just go immediately back in like I might have wanted to. That was a massive brain play from Obito. Was able to shark for just a little bit of time, but unfortunately no one else on Radiance was really around to capitalize on the shark. Then Obito was able to come through with, go ahead and watch that back on the overhead for this when I do actually end up posting it. But now you see this push coming back in Radiance. They have to take that control and they actually just do flip it back in an instant. There was no one really around painting the zone for F2 win. They're willing to give that one away. And now they're looking for the engage of their own in order to extend this fight. Yeah, they need that engage of their own. It looks like Kiko's just trying to find something here. Then playing pretty passive this game with the K-Shot compared to, you know, his normal insane tense aggression. Makes sense when you don't have a fast uh, bomb. And the inkjet, but Kyo going down right now will allow Kiva to try and find something. He's going to try and take out the armors at least, but not quite finding any members right here. He's just still going to be just strangling around. Potentially looking for this inkjet landing, but no. Biscuit sni uh, sniffs him out and is going to now be pushing Kiva on this side angle. As he's still just looking for something, but not really been doing much here. Also, Cam wants to watch Kiva for some reason. Uh, not much is going on. Not really much is going on for Kipper right now, but it does mean that's good news. Radiance was able to take care of that for a long period of time. Double Storm, though, popped on the zone for FT when they start to move on forward, but they can't really find as much momentum off of those storms as they would have liked. It's a chill situation for them, and Radiance is going to maintain the hold, get the lead, uh, and now you already know Kipper's positioning right now so far forward, already being such a nuisance here for FT Win to really deal with. It's going to be very, very hard for FTWin to deal with, especially with Hitler just being able to put on so much pressure with that bamboo. But forced backwards by the inkjet armor combination once again. It's been so crucial for them, but it's only Bisky left alive. Unless Bisky just oh. comes through, paints everything, gives everything. No, that's going to be it. Radiance taking the next game and tying this up. One to one already, k -Bot. And we could be here for 14 games if we're not, uh, if, if, if we, uh, I don't know if, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't know how to follow that sentence. I kind of messed up there. Well, you know, it happens to the best of us, but Hypnos and Obito able to clean up the three man for FT win there uh, towards the end of that game was very big for them. You'll notice Biscuit was being very aggressive on one side of the map, but again, in true FT win fashion, it was three on one side, one on the other. And uh, once more, Radiance was able to take the fight to the three and they were able to become victorious over that. Again, I think that was like a double for Obito and one for Hypnos. Um, so well done there in order to take care of that in order to take care of the primary threat, especially in terms of painting power, because that's one of the things about the inkjet, right, is that it's not going to be able to unload a lot of ink onto this zone. So even if it's able to find picks from afar, it's really only going to be able to open the window of opportunity for the rest of that paint to come through, as opposed to actually doing more painting in of itself. So good awareness from Radiance in order to take care of that. Uh, and that's going to even the series score effective best of five here for the first set of grants. Yep, it's uh, been whittled down to a best of five, but of course the reset is still a possibility if Radiance do take this series. However, I will say it's going into Splat Zone's Makamart. FD win are definitely happy about that. You have H3 and you have Rapid on the side of Makamart. So on the side of Radiance and how I do believe that you know, once you get control, you can spam a bit with Rapid. Torpedo can be useful, but it's definitely not kind of a long-range, straight line map that you might think of where those weapons can be so strong. However, on FD win side, you have Tri Slosher. Tri Slosher so good here. So I definitely think they're happy to have this map pick or this map come up. Absolutely. Kyo's got to be happy. That's for sure. <laughs> um, just being able to run around these stacks with that tri slasher is going to be very big for them. Gray still sticking with this crap in, and this is a look I think we're starting to just notice is going to be prominent here for the side of Ravidance. With that H3, Hypnos on that bamboo, sometimes going over to the charger. 
course, Kimmer on the K-Shot here as well. Entirely, um, you know, maybe a little bit less paint, but a little bit more slaying power along with them. That's going to hopefully convert into winning some more of these fights. Firstly, though, that spam from Grey does allow him to get taken down, and they will try and take out Biscuit, too. He does. It's only Shaq left alive right now, but it's a 1v2, so it's definitely not the worst situation. Oh, Shaq, sorry, <laughs> has been at the back of the map. It does have the cloud running down to go in for the next engagement right now. Himmo has the, uh, the missiles ready to respond, but there's not really much else going on in the terms of specials, although we probably will see an armor inject coming out very, very shortly after these missiles from FTWIN. Missiles are coming out here, and now three specials online for FT win. They really have to start stepping forward, but they have to step through so much orange ink in order to do just that. You already noticed Greg actually getting taken down, and the rest of Radiant's backing up in order to uh, take care of this, giving the zone over, but even still, FT win relentless. It's two on that engagement, and now Kiver trying to come up from behind onto Shaq here, trying to get that dive, and is able uh, to get the trade at the very least, which is going to be good here, but again, FT win now in a two-down situation. Uh, actually, Joe is able to find one, able to find two here, and Kyo is actually going to be looking to continue uh, helping FT win here maintain uh, this hold right now on the zone. Getting control is so crucial for FT win against this composition. I feel like being able to lock out Radiance will definitely be a task that isn't too difficult with their sort of composition. I'm not saying that, you know, locking out Radiance in general will be easy, but on this sort of map against that sort of composition, it's definitely a lockout that you'll be going for. However, Grace will be moving forwards now, going pretty aggressively, you know, he has the ball online, but gets taken out before he has the chance to pop it, get those falls all the way back. He just you know, forcing everyone back into their spawn, and they don't really have much time and much resources to push back into the zone now. Not at all. Here is the furthest one to this zone, but really isn't going to be able to do much in terms of engaging onto this free stack of FT win. Now engaging with one one on Kyo on the other side of the map here. Uh, all the meanwhile, Hip knows can go ahead and get taken down by Biscuits, Nautilus, and that is going to mean FT win secures the knockout in game three in order to net themselves once again the advantage in the set. And that is almost about what I expected. If Radiance do get control, they're able to do a lot with it. They're able to, you know, put a lot of pressure on with the Rapid. They're able to, you know, spam away as they do. And it worked really well for a while. But as soon as they lose it, it's just so hard to then push back in against that FD win composition with your own composition. It just didn't work out for them. Hopefully, you know, I, I feel like this team will be pretty happy to know that Makamart isn't coming back up unless there's a reset. And Snap Canal will do great for what they've been going for with this Rapid Bamboo H3 style. By the way, on the last map, we talked about how Kyo, uh, you know, would really enjoy that map. Yeah. Really did enjoy that map. 9KA uh, in that short of a game for Kyo. Uh, carrying, well, maybe not carrying, but <laughs> definitely putting in his part for FT win on that map. But as you mentioned here, yeah, absolutely. Snapper Canal, certainly going to be something where uh, we expect that perhaps a little bit more uh, a slower play, I guess, mm. Yeah, um, might might be more beneficial here, especially in terms of Radiance, given the fact that they have a lot of this uh, range to their disposal. They can try to have Gray shoot around a lot of these kind of tight corners and things like that on the Grappin. Uh, and probably something that they'll like a little bit more than Mako Mart, because again, that's something where Kyo is just, like anytime there's a little bit of elevation change, um, especially Kyo is just going to really enjoy that kind of a map. So um, we'll have to see exactly, you know, if they can fully capitalize on that and take one map back for their own, uh, very back and forth set so far. And I imagine that uh, it's going to be a battle of momentum here. Well, I do at least think that it will be Radiant trying to slow down the pace of the game. Even if it isn't an innately slower map, they definitely will be able to slow that down because, you know, you can very easily just sit on your side and spam onto the zone, spam onto the other side, spam uh, so, so many places with, with H3, with Bamboo, with Rapid, and that's been a big core of what they've been playing with. If you can find that space and you can find that paint, and add that pressure on, you're going to then allow Kiva to just do so, so much on the Keisha, on the T-Tech. This definitely screams, you know, like, this is a Radiance map in my eyes. You know, not saying they're going to win the map, but I'm saying that they're definitely going to be happy to play on this map. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, have to see exactly how this one comes on through here as we turn our attention back onto the game. Kyo switching over to the Soda Slosher here, opting for uh, that first bomb rush and breath. Perhaps a little bit more of that range, uh, which is probably going to be beneficial on the whole, especially given the same composition that we've seen come out from Radiance time and time again. However, we do now have back to the fire fin, similar to the first, uh, similar to the last set against Dream over the Bamboozler. So that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Not yet finding anything, but Hypno so does eventually go down. Biscuit now should be rushing up with Bursley, but it looks like Great is able to find kind of a pincer maneuver now and take them out. We'll be moving forward with Kimmer. That was very, very well executed by them, and it will allow them to move forward and hopefully take the zone in the street, but the cloud is definitely going to put on pressure and make it more difficult, but Kimmer right now, spotting Kill on the other side of the map, it's going to be popping in to deal with him. 
Yeah, Joe's going to have to jump out of that one. Uh, perhaps a little bit overextended in the base or was really looking for something, really trying to bully some of the members around and was trying to pull out that flank, but unfortunately realized that his thought was probably dated at that point. In any event, going to mean that Radiance can convert this into his own cap. And now with Joe going down once more, uh, Radiance, and now actually Kiver just able to find oh. that one onto Biscuit there as well on the side. Uh, now, again, Radiance in a very strong position here, especially given the range of their weapons and especially given the fact of the win currently running angles. Yep, if you win running angles, so Hypnos is going to have a field day with the ranges he can have on this map. But, you know, would need to play aggressively because of how you're kind of a passive if you win are playing right now. They're really struggling to find this situation. There's just so much spam on the street. They don't want to move into it, but they eventually will have to. And they will with the assistance of the inkjet, but they don't get a cap on the zone. In fact, Radiance recap the zone. They do eventually find this pick onto him, uh, a Beto, though. That's very, very big. As it's give it a feat and is taken down as well. FD Win will finally take control, but nobody are going down to 14 for a single engagement. That was so, so many points. Radiance were able to claim of just a single push with the amount of spam they put on alone. Absolutely, and that's going to mean FD Win has a long way to go in order to come on back here. But again, perhaps this is one of these bases where FD Win is going to have a very similar long push as well. Certainly could happen here, but the armor is going to come out of Radiance to try to collapse on some of these members. Shaq going to go down here. Biscuit might be the next one to follow here. Going to hop on back out of that inkjet. Hypno is going to go down here to Kyo, and now Kyo trying to apply a little bit more pressure onto Kipper is able to find that kick. And now FD Win continues to hold on to the zone, fends off Radiance for that push, and might be looking uh, to do the same in the future. Yep, should be looking the same. Gray does get taken out late, which isn't really what you want. Armor gets popped early, so I'm assuming FT Win will be going for an aggressive push right now, rather than staying back, but Joe gets taken out as a result of it. That's not what you want to see, and now Shaq's weak, being forced back, and this all does allow Radiance to move forward, but they lose Gray in the process, so it's a pretty even engagement here. As long as Kiva can stay alive, the Radiance might be able to paint, but no, too much damage onto him will allow Kiva to go down. The bomb is just going through the Radiance, so they will be trying to recap the zone, but nothing's really happening here yet, as it does look like FT Win will stay control with not too many points until they flip the lead. This kid up in the air with the ink shed being such a nuisance here right now for Radiance and able to find that last one onto Gray. Well done here and actually FT Win looking to take the lead with the armor coming out here as well. Go going to start to step on board here and try to apply a little bit more pressure onto Radiance. Now he's going to be able to find one onto Gray. Kipper going down here as well and that's going to be the knockout for FT Win. They go up three to one in this series and they are currently on tournament point. Tournament point is what FT Win are finally sitting on. They have been waiting for this moment, I, I, I can imagine, potentially for so long, because they have not been able to win over this kind of like idea of a top EU team. And obviously, Radiance are no longer considered the top EU team, but I mean, they've not won a tournament over like, an EU team of this caliber in so, so, so long. And they could finally do it. They only need another map. If it falls apart here, that would be heartbreaking. But they are in position and poised to do it. Uh, it's going to be hard for Radiance to make the comeback with how well FD Win are playing. But I mean, it's not like we haven't had a close game. Both teams are playing phenomenally. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the reset happen and for it to come back. Like this right now is definitely an FD Win's. The ball is in their court, but Radiance could definitely take an earning point. If you're Radiance, though, what do your team comms sound like right now? Um. I don't imagine they're rapid. quite happy. Oh, no. comms. I think comms. comms. Uh, I mean, yeah, probably unhappy. I don't would imagine be. they're all happy-go-lucky. I don't imagine that they're feeling the best about this next game. And I imagine that Wahoo World, probably one of those more neutral picks that could go either direction. Uh, I think FT Win certainly might have... Uh, can I mean, I think a lot of playstyles could actually work on this map. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to see exactly what comes on out here. Um, again, we expect that we know what these teams are going to be playing. Uh, but again, it is all going to come down to this. Radiance have to win the next three in order to force the correct reset to stay alive in this tournament. I think a Charger is definitely something that Radiance will be happy to have on their side here over FD Win. However, they do lose Kiva early and it will allow FD Win to just push forward so aggressively. They lose Shaq, however, it's now a 3-3 situation, and Radiance are still on their side. It could definitely push back in here. They have the ball and the Stingray to try and do so, and here it comes. The Hypnos right is popped, and it's going to be looking for some uh, damage. It is looking for a little bit of damage here, and at least able to dissuade Kyo from stepping on any further forward. Uh, but now the special is going to come out from FT Win to try to match that. Uh, is that Inkstorm going to roll on through? Oido going to be pushed back to every bar, but Gray pops that baller back on top of his own in order to maintain the cap for Radiance right now, but it looks like they're willing to give this one away as the consistent pressure for the Inkstorm continues to push them even further away. Biscuit popping this Inkjet here perhaps a little bit early. Not really anyone in sight right now to be uh, seen 
uh, and it does look like Radiant's able to come back around this zone and able to take care of this is with Kyo going down on the very front lines. Um, so overall, a lot happening right now, but overall, Radiant's actually holding on very well. Yeah, Radiant's holding on very well so far. And, ooh, nice shot from Great. We'll actually take out Shaq. That's exactly what they want to see. Uh, I didn't even meet that. <laughs> God, I completely lost my train of thought doing that, but they popped the arm and they popped the ray, and they'll start moving forwards now. All right, now Biscuit looking to try to do something here. Uh, trying to come on through here. Now there's the armor inkjet combination that we all know and love. Obido kind of stuck right now. Uh, can't really do a ton underneath uh, this zone. And now we're going to go down to the side with Jack. That's one for one trade. FT wins. still looking to move on forward. But all the meanwhile, they're just going to continue to get outranged by some of these members of Radiance. Given the fact that the composition, FT win really is not stepping forward and not, they're, they look afraid right now in all honesty. They're not, uh, you know, finding a lot of these massive things that we know them for. And really just kind of sitting around hoping that Radiance overextends, but Radiance knows they don't need to. Yeah, they don't need to, but Gray pops that baller right now. It's going to put a lot of pressure on Bursi to move backwards, and he does. However, Rain has been going down on the zone. There's no one really there. Gray and Abito are now backed up, but it will be Chubbish up by Abito, always able to follow up with that H3. However, the Inkjet is popped and does take them out. We'll be trying to find Gray here, but Gray is able to survive, but look at the situation he's forced into. I doubt Gray will have one jungle, but actually, Gray's still alive, and actually one went down on the side of, on the side of FD win. Gray is so good with that head. I, 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 I'm so happy to see him back on this weapon because it's insane at how much he's been able to do with it in, in these uh, 1v1 situations. Here's the other thing. If Gray tried challenging that, you can't. Like, the best he can do is just sit still, <laughs> right? And that's kind of what it looked like he was doing there for a large part of the time because, uh, you know, didn't really have a lot of map control around, didn't necessarily want to drop, and now is right able to hop back in the fight and continue applying the pressure to the other side of the map. Well done there. Hypno's on this thing right now, looking for a little bit more pressure. Biscuit forced to jump on away once more. And Shaq now getting attacked from multiple different angles, given the inkjet, given the stingray. And now you start to see where uh, Radiant Zeus really feeling comfortable. They're stepping on forward. They're taking every fight they can find. And now with 12 ticks of the timer left to go, they might have just won the game. But here comes the last attack coming in from Biscuit and Shaq. But that's the eight biscuit in the inkjet could be forced to jump back doesn't get the ink onto zone and radiance is going to stay alive in the tournament for now radiance not dropping quite yet only need two more games and right now it's honestly like not a bad situation for them at all you could definitely kind of put this in the same situation as fd win being up one over the best of three because that's all it is fd win needs one radiance need two it's really not far off radiance being able to reset the bracket all they need is some nice maps, keep their confidence going and keep their mindset up. And I think it'd be going through, you know, you mentioned before, how do you think the Radiance comms are right now? You know, do you think they don't feel too confident? However, I do think that Radiance are one of the best teams at staying composed. They are one of those teams with a strong mental. I, I, I think, I'm not saying that they're the absolute strongest mentals in the world, never ever tilt. But I think if you compare it to a lot of other teams, they definitely have a pretty solid mental game. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that kind of shows right there, right? Uh, they're able to stay composed. They're able to take care of business there. And really, they weren't stepping far forward until the very end of that game when they knew they pretty much had that one in the bag. So well done there to Radiance. Uh, but now, curveball time. Port mackerel, everybody. Oh, uh, I knew we'd get one. one map, I knew we'd get one. If this is the one map for Hypnos to go back to the custom jet squelcher, it would be this one. All I'm going to say is I said to Kbot, we are going to get one absolutely terrible map in Grand Finals. I I, I didn't know if it was going to be Moray. I didn't know if there's no Moray today yet. But no, Port Macro. Oh, Moray's going to be Game 7. Moray's Game 7. <coughs> but either way, Port Macro. We don't see it often, so you guys might have forgot about it. But basically, Port Macro can be, de be described by three straight lines. And that's what the map designer said was good to go. Um, I don't think FD win happy right now because... Not only did you mention the race spam thing, but think about how FD win play. Think about what Radiance are playing today. Radiance are playing all the straight line weapons that just shoot in one direction and do a lot of damage to you from long range. What's Kyo going to do against that? That does not sound Maybe fun team. at all. Yeah, fizzy, fizzy spam is the best bet. Uh, I expect I expect Kyo to go over the K machine. Honestly, if I don't see that, I might be a little mad. Mm, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you can play around the crates a little with try. I wouldn't say it's completely hopeless. Oh, he's gonna go with it. Go and try. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Stay mad. <laughs>
Uh, meanwhile, orange and zap for gray. Okay, I love this. Why is no. this weapon getting played? Why can we not just play K shot like normal human beings? I, I love this, right? You already have the armor from the uh, from Abito, and on this map, missile is one of the best things combined with Stingray to do so much more. So now this is what they're gonna do. You pop missiles, all four people are missiled up, and Hitmos can go ham with the ray. Even if he doesn't find any picks, it allows Renny to just start moving forwards, and they've just played exactly what I wanted them to. However, if one team's gonna counter that, it's gonna be the smarter FT win. Kiting backwards, not taking the engagement against the Ray, able to live through it, and then moving back in with their own resources when they have the advantage. And now, again, the advantage is probably going to stick with FC win for now as there's no resources as mentioned on Radius. Those are already all exhausted. They're all sitting in their court. Now, Joe's going to come up big with a double, able to just take care of business. And now, FC win all of a sudden, the map is almost entirely blue. They're just going to continue moving on forward. Oh! Going down. Oh! Going down well. The squid bag coming out of Joe. Holy cow, they just blew this match right open. Not only a squid bag, Kyo just squid backed while he was being shot at instead of taking the engagement. The disrespect is unreal on this man. The amount of control they have now, this income, that's unreal. I don't think Radiance are very happy right now. Uh, if you want something that could break their mental, it's going to be Kyo squid backing you instead of fighting back. Hypnos now is going to pop this ray, but against the double armor, is only just able to find Shaq with no. the his team. Needs to find Kyo here now and does do it. That's going to be two, and it will allow Radiance to move forward. Oh! Oh, a nice shot from him to allow him to move in, and that is going to be the zone turning. It's down to nine points. However, if you want to talk about lockout K-Bot, then let's go over to Port Mackerel. Oh boy, lockout on Port Mackerel. Again, very flat here. Not many ways to get back into the zone. It's really going to come down to these fights here for these players and for these teams. Uh, they're really going to have to come back in, but actually already you're starting to notice Radiant starting to get a little bit discombobulated. Kipper and Obido are getting collapsed around by some of them. It's actually when Gray coming in to try to help on out. It's an absolute ink bath all around. Joe's going to be the one that stands at the end of the day. And now it's a 1v2. Hypnos needs to land a shot here in order to try to stall things out. But no, going to give away the zone to FT win, letting that penalty get applied. We're halfway through this game, but there is so much back and forth that's happened so far. Still able to do so much though, Hypnos, just by existing and Charger being Charger. No, everyone, no one wants to step in those sight lights and control the entire half of the map and allow Reddy to come through the other half. You take out two now and you're moving in. Shaq right now is going to be sharking with that CDS. Once we have to catch out a Beto on the side and could definitely win that game. And if anything's going to throw off a Beto's aim, it's going to be some flying sliding thing on the other side of the map. Great finding it though with the missiles and marking him with those 10 the uh, the uh, sorry Stingray going through at the same time will assist that pick and allow Radiance to continue this push and go towards the lockout but pissed it with that inkjet shot Coming in with the inkjet shot on Kimber, training back the other direction for what we're seeing already. But now 32, 31, 30. And Hypnos is once again the last one up for a Radiance. Really needs to start stepping on back and he is going to have to do just that. The penalty once again getting applied onto Radiance's counter. Now down to 24. They're slowly working through this timer. Can they find enough to force the game seven in this set? We'll just have to wait and see. But right now, FT win, not stepping on board. Here comes the incomer. They might be looking for the engage, try to shove some of these members away. Uh, and it, it looks like Shaq at least is going in. Uh, not quite able to find anything for right now. Now kind of tucked away in the corner. Is able to find the one onto Gray, though. And all the meanwhile, F2 Flynn continues to try to wear down their penalty, try to prevent a push coming back from Radiance, but I don't think that's enough. Kibber and the Ink Jet's going to be able to take out Biscuit, and the Cap's going to go back to Radiance. They're finally taking control back, but Kibber's so weak over here. Doesn't get taken out, but Gray does on the other side of the map. It's not the advantage that Radiance would want with that pick. Kibber right now needs to find something else. He can't just stand here, and at first he should be the one being the junior, but no! Shaq is there to support him, allows Bursi to get that pick, and allows FT Win to move back into zone. However, such a nice shot from Hypnos. You'd think he'd be inexperienced after spamming Rays for too long, but no, such an amazing shot. We'll get it on the side of the map. They're gonna need to keep zone control, though. You don't want to give penalty points over, and there's only three left until the timer starts ticking down. You only need a little more. Hypnos pops the right, needs to find picks, or they're losing paint for nothing. Does do it, though. Fights two, only one point needed to tie it up, and it's happening. Radius takes the lead in the last 30 seconds, but haven't quite taken the series. Kyo pops the armor to try and keep it up here, but Gray right now is just going to move over behind him and able to take him out. Raiders are still all on zone. Kiva gets another pick. Only a few points left. Needs the paint to come through, and it's only Bertie left alive. Just the junior, and Radiance will tie it up and take it to match point. 3-3 three, three in this best of seven, K-Bot. What a game. Honestly, 
Matt, please go post these on YouTube. Yeah. More people needed to see that masterpiece coming in for both teams, as a matter of fact. Not only the FT1 Smack Talk to start things off, but then Radiant slowly inching their way back over multiple consecutive pushes, able to hold onto the zone for long enough in order to take care of business. Absolutely massive. And now it's a game seven. This is Grand Finals. This is either FT wins tournament or Radiance forcing the bracket reset. FT win would much rather close it out here. They would much rather not have to worry about going to a bracket reset. You mentioned so often how you just want to see FT win win over a European team. Silence everybody in terms of that international performance. They, they're given an opportunity to do it here. They've had three games now in order to try to close this one out. Will this be the set? as we head to Gobi Arena for Game 7. No more, eh? Um, I no will more. say, I wouldn't really give this either team a favor on this map. One big thing that you look at in this map is Inkjets, and you have Kiva, amazing on the Inkjet, Biska, amazing on the Inkjet, and I would say that neither of the massive differences in the team's comps or playstyles greatly favor, you know, who would prefer this map more. And when I say prefer this map more, I don't saying who would win this map because of it being good for them, because obviously the other team could always come back when it's not favored for them. But I'm saying the team that's going, yes, we have this map. I like this. If I were to give it to either team, I'd say Radiance, because Bamboo can just sit on your side and paint over so much, so safely, put on so much pressure. The missiles are really good to spam alongside of it. And even if you're going for the five in, that can do the same. However, definitely an even map pick, which is what I like to see. I don't want the last game getting given down to chance and just being carbon on uh, Albacore all over again. <sighs> I'm recollecting my breath. Because we are going to see ink jets. We are going to see collapses. We are probably going to see Kyo Squid Bag. <laughs> Get ready. It's all coming around again. Grand Finals of In The Zone 21. Game 7 of Grands. This is either FT wins tournament or Radiance forcing the bracket reset. Gray sticks with the orange end zap in order to come on through with this one. They don't need the double armor anymore. No double armor. Gonna be opposite those missiles, and it makes sense. Not only can you combine it with the ray, which was so strong on port, but on this map, the big thing you'll be combining with it is that ink chat. Obviously, not immediately. It takes a while to charge on the T Tech, but it's still going to be so strong. Rainy's getting first control, but that's how FD win play. They allow first control so they can come back in, and they're gonna be trying to do that on the storm, but there's just so much control and pressure that Rainy's are putting on. It's hard for FD win to drop right now, but finally being forced back, it's gonna be what FD win are doing, and they take out two with the ink chat. Taking out two, when now FC Win is starting to continue to build up their momentum here just a little bit more. The map completely purple already. Granted, probably not going to be that big of an advantage on Gobi Arena, given the fact that, you know, these kind of snipes and flats are just a little bit more awkward. Um, but nonetheless here, certainly the bomb pressure coming out of FT Win right now is stalling the push, coming back for Radius. Yo, steps perhaps a little bit too far forward, gonna have to jump on away, but Kimber goes down on the other side of the map here. Ray going down as well, and that's gonna mean less paint is coming in onto this zone. Radiance really needs to find something clutch right now, but Kimber is going to jump on in, and Joe's gonna take them out. One for one trade, and once more, F2 win continues to hold on the zone. We just need to start moving on forward for Radiance right now, but I don't know if they have anything in them. They might not have anything in them, but they're going to try. They oh. pop the armor, they pop the ray, but they don't find anything yet. Gray able to go backwards to pop the missiles after getting the cap. It's so big. They now take out two. That's going to be extremely important for the side of Radiance right now. However, I think Show might be behind Radiance if I'm not... Oh, no. <laughs> Joe's in front of them, I'm wrong, and he gets taken out, which is not what you want to see. It gives so much more time for Radiance to build up their specials for the next engagement. And with Kiba on that inkjet combined with the missiles that will be coming through, it's going to be hard to deal with. FD win are going to need to come up huge with this in uh, this in to defend, but no! Kiba! Kiver already getting one and now putting up so much pressure on the rest of these members of FT win. They had to collapse around him first and now they have to try to force their attention back on the zone, which they might just be able to do. Biscuit already popping this inkjet. Now he's going to jump on back and not going to be with the rest of that engagement. The specials are slowly trickling on his own for FT win. There's no real engagement. There's a wall of green ink all around this zone and FT win is finding it very difficult in order to break back in here. Bertie can't quite get the paint on zone from this angle right now and now Shaq going down as well. The Stingray comes out here. It's a two down situation for Radiant they finally find the cap with just four ticks of the timer left at the halfway point of this game and it is so close to this game seven so so close in this game seven now fd win finally put it over in their favor but 
and considering how long they held before, they've got to feel confident. Obito only just respawned, being the last one. So it's going to be a while until the armor comes online. They are going to be going for those specials. And with the special combinations, they might be able to find something. And FT went out really close to their own. Missiles come out early. Inject's coming through right now. They need to find picks. They need to find it fast or FT are going to take it. Looks like they're starting to push back in. You see the paint coming in on zone for Radiance. They are going to be able to find that cap. Now they have to find the picks to follow. Kyo is going to get collapsed on by a couple of members of Radiance right now. Uh, is Kipper starting to try to move on forward? No, Kipper and Greg both go down here. And that's going to be the two down situation right now for Radiance. As Joe starts to move on forward, Hypnos forced to jump on away. And FT Win is looking to wear down their penalty and extend their lead. If not, go for the knockout on this very push. They need the knockout on this push. They have the cloud. They have the inject. And Obito only just respawned. Kyo on the flank right now. That's exactly what you want to see. He's just waiting. Not trying to paint too much. Not trying to get the attention that he doesn't need. And it looks like he managed to do it without the noticing. But he's not able to fight quite by the pick. The Ray turns onto Kyo. And it isn't able to find anything. Two go down on FT win. And really still have time. They recap the zones with three points remaining. And they're still in the tournament, k -Bot. They still have a chance. But it's not like FT win. It's on this team fight. Biscuit staying on the angle. And is able to take out another. Kiva is going to need to take him out. And he does. Radiance are in defense mode now. And they've got to defend without losing their zone. Or it's looking bad. I was so distracted by what Kyo was doing, I didn't realize how little time there was left between FT Win winning that game and Radiance completely getting knocked out of this tournament. Now, once again, you're going to start to see FT Win start to trickle some of these specials onto the zone. We're going to have to see if they can pull out here and do just that. Kiver sharking on this puddle. You're starting to see if this come on forward here for FT Win. They might be able to find the cap right here. Now with the two down situation, the, the three down situation, they're able to find that cap and apply that penalty. Absolutely massive. And now all of a sudden, Kiver's the last one up getting taken down. And that's going to be, Joe is going to be able to do the sharking thing once more onto the other side of the map and FT win <gasps> has a convincing hold with 23 seconds left to go. Kyo gets taken out though. Keeper getting taken down was actually huge but now Kyo gets taken down and now it's a 3-4 situation. They start moving forward. He does get a jump through but the Ray and the missile is just putting on too much pressure. Shanks left alone and all the members of FT win are so so weak leading into this last engagement. Kiva is able to pick up Biscuit with the inkjet. Needs to try and find Kyo and they're not able to do it though. Kyo is still existing but does jump out. One last defense to change this game, but no specials online for Radiance. No specials online for Radiance, and they're not really going to be able to charge things up here. Ooh. Kipper, though, on the sharp, looking for something here. Might be able to come on back behind Shaq, but now the Ink Arbor is going to come on through for FC Win, slowing things out. Now everyone's going away for the zone for Radiance right now. They might just give this one away with the two-down situation. They're going Ooh. to do just that. FC Win going to go ahead and take the tournament. Kiva with an amazing idea with that flank, but Shaq just had it. He knew what to do, and he sealed it for his team. FD win after over two... Uh, it's been over two years at this point, or two years around about. Finally beats an established Kiva Grey team and win a tournament over a top European talent. They've finally done it, k -Bot, here today in the Zone 21.